the slides we are okay. recording. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. So. Okay. So can I start, Purman? Is that okay? Yes, Karthi. We are good to go. Okay. Fine. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Welcome everyone. Uh, thanks for the invite, Vermal. Uh, so I'll just start with the session. Hopefully it's all works out fine. Not it. Okay. So as you know, this is a one day event and then we have lots of gifts. Please, please till day, stay till the end uh, with all the gifts and all. So we'll just move on to the session. Okay. Today we're going to talk about data governance using Azure Purview. Okay, I'm going to have this uh, session as interesting as possible uh, so that uh, you guys can relate to the actual problem that might uh, Azure Purview will uh, solve for. Okay. So I'll I'll take it as a, some kind of a scenario where it is a office based scenario. Okay. So yeah, so you are being uh, promoted as a enterprise data architect. Okay. So one day somebody calls you and then you are being promoted as an enterprise data architect. And then how things will all span out, and then how you can handle that those problems uh, you, uh, using one of the tool for your data architecture, which is our uh, Azure Purview. Okay, so that's how we, I'm going to take it, so that you can relate what are the problems that might occur, or what are the problems that the data architect needs to solve in uh, in a very big enterprise or a small enterprise where it has grown to. Places where it has a sales, products, customers, and all the other uh, other entities that use use or makes money. Okay, so that that's how I'm going to start. We'll, we'll keep it as a, some kind of a small story or a storyline where we can understand how uh, how Purview can be used to solve uh, the really business problem, real business data problems. Okay. Fine. Okay. So you are tasked as a enterprise data architect. You are tasked to meet the CEO, the chief privacy officer, few IT managers, all the IT managers and data scientists and compliance officers. Okay. And then you thought, okay, just a meet. I'm going to just meet and greet, but it's not the case. So it's going to unfold lots of uh, things into the system. All right. Okay. So when you met the CEO, he says, uh, why is the data is extremely conflicting? Every time I get different number whenever I ask for a report and then he says there is no one single source of truth and he says everything is unacceptable. It's everything's dragging down because I cannot get a proper report on sales, marketing or the number of resources that is being used or uh, if I want to collect to uh, forecast on uh, what what I want to do, there is no reliable source of truth. So the CEO is very angry on us saying that these are the problems that needs to be solved, which is extremely uh, needed even though you just became a, a data architect today they wanted to be solved certain problems to be solved yesterday okay so that is a ceo's concern when you met ceo okay then you thought okay next meeting will be fine so you understand out of the uh, problems when you meet the ceo the problem is mostly on one second So the problem is mostly on uh, data sources. Okay, the availability of data sources or all the data is available in a single source, the lineages. So understood there is a problem with the availability of data source and the uh, integrity of the data source. Okay, so that is a problem you understood after the CEO meeting. Then you move on to uh, chief privacy officer and he talks about uh, there are lots of customer data which is under risk. Okay. The PA is improperly protected. He says compliance is being ignored. He feels de uh, deeply disappointed and he says there are no proper safeguards for the PII. So whenever there is a uh, 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 audit comes in or if you want to get a PII ISO, it is not possible. Okay. So that is what uh, chief privacy officer concerns are. So he is trying to uh, figure out lots of data are available, whether who uses PII, who does not uses PII. Those are all very complicated. So it is it's on this uh, plate where he has to figure out how PIA can be handled better. OK, so that is the problem. Then you understood. Uh, OK, you know what? Uh, PIA is a problem right now, so that is fine. Let's let's fix the PIA problem. So these are that's one of the problems. So we 
so we became a data architect and then we met uh, two people one is our ceo and another is our cpo which is our chief uh, privacy officer uh, the ceo raised a concern of the data source not available or invalid or late or it's not in one place and the cpo talks about uh, PII, where PII is and the awareness of PII and the mitigation of problems with PII is not dealt properly. Okay, so just you became a data data enterprise data architect in a day, and then you met all these people, and then you went and met uh, IT managers, and then IT managers are saying there is no sanitized terms, and there is uh, lots of people are using the same column name in a different database, different way. For example, in customer, the first name will be named as uh, uh, the first name and last name is can be a uh, is named in a, a full name and then in a sales database is given as first name and last name and then there is no proper differentiation or definition on how to use uh, custom or standard column names so these are the problems so he says uh, you want to handle both you want to create a glossary across organization and also for the existing database he doesn't want to change the database names so that every name and uh, anything that relates to the customer name should be grouped together and it should be easily searchable. So that is a, one of the problem he comes up, comes up. So he has, he wants to create a glossary for the new projects and also the old projects also should work if there is a report or query that needs to be built. So that is the IT, IT manager's concern. So you understand, okay, there are what there is no absence of glossary. Uh, so what are the problems we all saw in previous slides was one is the one data, so I mean availability of all the available data sources, PAA problem, and there is no proper glossary. So these are three problems as of now when you spoke to the uh, your stakeholders. Okay, then you went and spoke to data scientists, and the data scientists are saying I cannot locate data sets, and then he's saying it's actually more, most of, most of the data are skewed. He doesn't know where the data started. They check the lineage of the data, the integrity of the data. So these are the problems where uh, the data scientist has actually concerned came up with. And then he's talking about all the problems that is hampering his uh, data science. OK, so so and he also wants better tools to leverage the integrity for data science. It's all about integrity. The model by itself will not be 100% accurate. You know, the data is wrong, we are screwed. Okay, so the forecasting or the reports that is created or the uh, customers that actually uses the report, uh, uses the um, our data. So those are all the places where it will help us to, uh, for data scientists, it's very tough. Okay, so already data will be, um, the main problem with data scientists is we are having data in one single place and also making sure the integrity is right. And also making sure the lineage is right. Lineage is nothing but uh, knowing the history of the data, okay, where it started and where it is right now. Say, for example, uh, whenever there is a, a customer coming in, okay, so the first the customer comes in the uh, lead generation and then it goes to the sales call, and after the sales is complete, it moves to the uh, uh, actual customer. It becomes a customer and then uh, the what are the products that sold to him and uh, what is the product we can recommend to him so those are so there is a lineage right starting from lead generation to current customer so still he is a customer but he has gone through certain stages or a customer would have directly come from a ceo's reference or it can be through a marketing so lots of things are there so we have to know where the data came from and how it is traveled and cleansed from one place to another uh, the data science the scientist's role is mostly on cleansing the data, getting the data ready, and making sure that um, data is ready for creating a model. Okay, uh, in any any data science problem, the problem is not figuring out what is algorithm or what is the thing to do, but cleaning the data, trying to figure out the data is correct or not. So those are the main problems of data scientist. And uh, data scientist has asked you to give a better data with high integrity. Okay, so we understood uh, there is no proper data catalog. And there is no where you can find the data, where you can find the metadata, so we can discover data. So those are the problems he comes up with. So those are also needs to be addressed by you. And yeah, 
Next is the compliance officer. The compliance officer is trying to track down what are the problems that comes in BII, legal risk. Now, uh, are we uh, uh, having policies? Are we uh, are we uh, implementing the policies and procedures right or not? Because there might be a say ISO renewal that comes up or ISO audit that comes up. So, a compliance officer uh, comes and tells us I have to do lots of audit before saying uh, an NC or um, it is compliant. So those those are all going OK. So these are the problems as they come. OK. So basically the compliance activities are nightmare. So the, those are the problem that comes in. So these OK. So when when I uh, came up with this, so basically uh, the problems that are uh, needs to be solved by the data science, uh, data architect is he needs to know what are the, all the data sources. He needs to know uh, where are the PII and what are the tables that are carries the PII for uh, then data glossary so that people will understand the sales department will have some other name for the same column and the marketing might have some other name for the same column and the products division might have the same column data warehouse team might have the same column but all in a different names so if we want to query right for say for example i want to then uh, find out uh, the flow how the customer has gone or which marketing campaign has actually made more revenue so so if you want to find that and the customer name itself is different in different where how you will put a query it will be a tough right so you need a glossary where uh, it will should support the existing system which which has a different names and also the new system we should have a proper names okay and uh, and one more thing is for example there are two teams available uh, meaning um, say for example there can be a team which talks about uh, sales and there is a team which talks about a marketing and a sales team can have a one different data scientist and marketing team can have a different data scientist. OK, marketing guys wants to access the sales database. OK, right now, mostly how it works is either you expose an API or you give, give the connection string to the uh, user, meaning the marketing guy. OK, both are wrong. Right? And once the connection string is given, we will not know what they are doing with it. Can uh, when can we actually remove the connection? So those are all becomes a extremely highly uh, complicated thing which will affect the compliances because compliance always talks about zero trust policies where you, you have to give only uh, access to the data which is needed by that particular division, particular problem. Okay, so those are the comes and data catalog is another catalog where we need to talk, talk about discovery, metadata, everything. Okay, so these are the problems identified. Basically, the problem is data is everywhere. There is no single place to access the data and there is no single place to uh, control the data such that I know whom I gave access to. What are the data available? What are the data I have available in my in my organization and how can I leverage it to increase my business and also making sure my uh, uh, company is compliant. So these are the problems that comes uh, comes which you have which you have collected after you have uh, after you have actually talk, spoke to the data uh, data I mean, uh, all the people uh, such as CEO, CPO, uh, your data scientist, IT managers. Okay, so we have collected a bunch of things, and then you are thinking about it. What should I do to make that happening? Okay, then you realize there is something called implementing data governance. Basically, it's a data, right? You are having to uh, realize, uh, create a data Is there any question I need to answer? Is, can I can I uh, move forward? So, Permal, can I? Can I am audible, right? Yeah, you are. OK, fine. Okay. Okay. All right. So uh, as of now, I think no questions. We'll uh, just once get into deeper my tab questions. If you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, are you have uh, gone through the same uh, problem in your life? Uh, you can actually uh, ask in the same thing. OK, how to handle that uh, without with or without purview. OK, then I'm happy to answer. Uh, yeah, all the data problems we have. I mean, I, I have gone through that because we have a data analytics platform which actually does lots of data related work. So I have gone through this uh, problem myself. Okay, all right. Okay, so what is data governance? 
so he understood the problems that get a problems that are arise arise in a enterprise and then we spoke about what are the problems we saw basically the un unavailability of uh, all the data sources in one single place existence of pii non existence of data glossary so that developers and business can talk in a ubiquitous language no proper access to data either you give connection string or they don't know where to get access for for that particular department or it lies in one single center center place where every data is given access to the autonomy of giving data access, access to one department to another department is non existence and compliance is a problem on the data catalog okay fine right. So data data governance is nothing but a process managing data in organization. Nothing else. Okay, it takes care of availability, usability, integrity, and security. That's the main thing. Availability, nothing but the data is available for the department in a right time and right access. Usability is all data should be usable by the user. What is the use of having some uh, one parquet file, which is uh, the 20 GB of file, which cannot be queried at all? Okay, so it is uh, storage, but it is not in a usable format. And every time a data scientist uh, does a conversion, and then yes, lots of time. So a single data, one data scientist will uh, clean it up, and this is for one department, another data scientist will clean it up for other department. So that is like a, a um, redundancy of work okay and security as you said the marketing team will have their own tables and databases and there are certain databases that needs to be data that needs to be shared with uh, market as a sales team and then whenever the use um, campaign is over they should <coughs> they should be able to cut the access right so those are all not available right now uh, with the normal process data governance give you that access okay so these are availability usability integrity security and everything we do it but there is no one single tool which we do it. Uh, there is um, so so the, the policy procedure and standards that is created for the data is called data governance. Okay, it's nothing else. Okay, so there are lots of tools available like Olibra, Atlan, Talent, Informatica, Apache Atlas. So these are tools available for today. We are going to look into the Azure Purview. Okay, so Azure Purview is one of the tool which helps us to. Uh, make sure or uh, manage or use the uh, all the solve the all the data uh, data related problems. Okay, any questions you guys have? Okay, let me move. In. Okay, let's get into the demo. So, what are the problems you are going to solve? Is trying to figure out the data sources, the PII, data glossary, access to data. Data catalog and the complaints. Okay. Let's take the availability of all data sources. Okay. Uh, let me share my screen. So you need to create a purview. So it's actually pretty straightforward. You need to create, create the uh, um, resources and the given name and then location. Okay. And few changes. It's almost straightforward. You just create uh, by selecting uh, create uh, by searching for viewer. And then go on. OK, then uh, I will. I have actually created already uh, because it will take at least uh, five to ten minutes to create one. And then yeah, the good thing this with this is. Uh, um, you can actually open the portal in the Azure. Okay, so this will be like a uh, purview dot Azure dot com, basically web dot purview dot Azure dot com. So I've created this already. Okay, and then so when you click on uh, this is you have to extend this. 
when you click on data map it will talk it you can actually add data to the uh, data sources okay say for example if i click on register there are multiple data sources you can add to the your enterprise meaning so for example you have an enterprise which has aws azure gcp you can still add all those data source in one place okay you can just connect you can even uh, there are like uh, service and apps where you can actually create uh, from sap you can actually have from sql databases all databases can be as simple as complicated as teradata to as simple as uh, mysql even google bigquery is available so these are the registered data source you can have so i'll just show you how uh, sql can be added i'm gonna sql 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 value my sql um, yeah so i'll select this i'll continue all you have to do is you have to select this uh, name and then collection and then it will, you can say marketing sales or all the collection okay once it does that what will happen is your database will be added here you can either change this to sales or you can change this to you can actually create all this okay so if you create so it says my my database meaning my uh, data governance i have added four assets okay and then one of them are database one is a data pipeline and another is a parquet file parquet file is nothing but as something like a, C, a csv file which is more efficient for querying okay and then a data factory so these are, are my assets in my data source meaning i can add all the data sources for, for example i have a aws i have an azure i have a gcp i have my on premise server i can add it everywhere okay once i add every database here what i can do is i can actually ask them to scan okay we'll come back to the scan certain after a certain point of time i'll just show you uh, how the scan works so you can actually you set rules also for this database i can set a rule saying that uh, i need to have this business accounts delivered okay so i'll show while uh, just go to the management once before moving to everything okay in management this is where you actually can uh, uh, manage your uh, data insights okay so i can see the data lineage okay so i have a data factory connection that is created here i have a data share which is uh, there and i can uh, see the uh, workflow that is available i can even create one I say for example in this workflow there is something called request user role for example when an update on role has been requested start wait i can set here meaning um, if i want to give access to someone I, if I want to say, for example, I take a data set and then want to give an access to uh, someone, then this is the process I can follow. So those authoring also you can do. Requests and approvals are available, okay, which will uh, come in as a mail to you if you have access to. So view all as admin, so it will be there. So workflow runs. Uh, I showed you workflow, right? Those runs, all the connections. You can actually add all connections here so that you can directly connect when you connect a data source. And also you can give access to uh, a data purview such that uh, uh, those data purview will be uh, uh, what is it uh, those data purview can use only a connections meaning for example uh, you don't want to people to uh, you don't you want to add people to the data source to there but you don't want to give share the credentials so you can actually save credentials which can be selected here from the key vault and you can also have uh, private endpoints adding private endpoints uh, for api access okay so that is also possible fine so this is the manage, <coughs> managed one the data map as the all data sources so the ceo has asked right i want all my data sources one single place okay this can this problem can be solved by our uh, azure purview all right fine so next is uh, next problem is the data is there and next problem is PA awareness, right? So PA is nothing but personal identifier information. Okay. So for example, the GDPR or any other complaints talks about your awareness of your PII and also how you can, if for example, uh, I am subscribed to Facebook. Okay. When I say I want to leave Facebook and if I remove my account from Facebook, the Facebook should remove all the, all my PII 
from when i started my login to till i remove uh, till i went off meaning the all the post i created the post i liked meaning you can still have access of data which is anonymous which can be used for their data science activities but any pii post with identifying kartikeyan as such cannot be in the system so when i click on my remove m account the whole lineage should go away so that is what uh, uh, pii is meaning the same my phone number email id my full name so those are all my pii meaning it can personally identify me any information that is linked to that should be removed from your system okay how will i remove uh, remove those information if i don't know where it exists right so i should know or i should have a single place where all the informations are available okay so for that awareness how do i know okay that is extremely tough right so how will i so i would have created a company as a single person and then it have gone gone for a thousand member okay so there can be like 40 to 100 databases which will have different things how can i identify all my pii which is available in different database okay okay so this is where our purview comes in to rescue for example there is something called scanning the database okay so when i click on scan i can actually schedule a scan here i can select all this i can select database and then i can click on scan here when i click on continue it will take lots of time so i'm not, not going to do that now so i'll go for view details it says okay these are the scan desk so it says there are discovered as such 15 and then and there are like uh, classified discovered classified is nothing but um we talk about right i'll show you that so there are lots of things which is already added by the purview say for example uh, your full name your austria's identity card it will even check the data and then say whether it is belongs to austria say for example i think uh, for us it is uh, three numbers i pen four numbers and three i guess for the ssn okay so there is a format right so those formats are all it remembers so when it scans your table or your database it will scan for all this type of details okay ireland japan license indian license number so it it has all this and also you can actually create one also for example you can say indian license okay and then license okay maybe i don't must get and then you have to type it is basically uh, uh i can actually customize sorry this is not the one you can customize this you can actually create customize rule where you can actually give a regex here so this regex you can select and then i'll select say for example classification name where some business number and then i'll give some i can click on continue i can give some pattern here regex pattern and then i can also set the threshold here okay so even if it's 45% i lab and also i can give a <coughs> patterns by uploading a csv file okay the, what is what this means is if what if i have a i have my own customized pii in a different format i can actually select here and when it scans it will scan those type of data in all the databases where it scans through okay so you remember we if you saw the scans here i will show you again so it it has scanned everything so if you can see the view details it would have scanned everything assets and all and also we can check set some scan rules also for each and everything you can actually set a scan rule you can uh, these are scan rules that are already available you can add few by clicking on new you can just say this is state name and then uh, say scan uh, i find lines and you can say you know what i select csv scan all this only avro scan i'll create a avro scan type or i'll say csv so csv will be in say for we have a blob storage or s3 bucket which we can use i can say scan for all these rules 
these are the rules you should scan. Okay, so I can select all these rules, and also you can select the custom rules you built here. Okay, for that for this database. Okay, so you can you don't have to scan uh, everything for this database. I can set a custom rule only for SQL databases. Okay, so those are things you can set, and if there are some pattern rules you can set. You can select pattern rules, and then select you know what if if this is the folder path available, I can actually go ahead and do this. So there are what pattern you can select. So any type of uh, uh, search or rules we want to apply, which is done by the data scientist or a data analyst or the data clean guy, can be automated here, and then you can do the same here. So that is the major advantage of using Power BI. Okay, so those are, so we we spoke about one single place of data source. Another is PI identification of PII, right? So let's see how I PII is there. Let's go. Find a figure out uh, how a PI will be there. So, for example, I have a customer, okay, and then I can check all the uh, properties. Okay, one second. Error. Okay, error. Okay. Yes. So I can say, see, I can see since it's a phone number, it has actually went to the data, and then it has figured out it's a US phone number. Okay, so that's a good thing. So it will also scan with this Australian phone number, US phone number. It will say it's a valid mail ID. Full names, it's a full name. So, so these are things it'll automatically scan without us being even checking it out. Okay, all right. And then, yeah. So the PA is identified, right? So that's that's one of the things we have. The next problem is what are the next problem? Next problem is basically uh, next problem is. Absence of glossary. Okay, meaning there is no single place where you can find glossary. Right, glossary is nothing but where there is a common term for a single column name. Meaning, so for example, if I am taking a full name, if I can check here, say for example, I go back again. I select the customer schema. So this first name is there, last name is there. There might be a database there which can have a only name which will take full name. Right. So those should be identified, right? So I should have a place where I select name. I should be able to get all the uh, names that are available, right? So, so let's take it. Uh, let's check out the glossary terms. There is something called glossary here. So it says we have uh, 51 glossaries that has come up here because of the scan, multitasking, organizational, workplace. So these are all all done. You can also check whether how many are related. Okay, some uh, so all the related things will come here. Let me find out which this glossary that is related. So I'll say personal data. Okay. I remember searching one. Okay, one second. You can also add new terms to it. So, okay, fine. So I couldn't find one which I forgot the name which I was searching. Okay, so that those are the glossaries. So you can figure out all the glossaries here. Uh, you can add glossaries by system default. You can select them and then you can give a name to it, and then you say this is all the columns I should have. The acronym, the resources I can select. So the resource name, the resource link. So these are stuff you can say. So this will become a own glossary. For example, for the name, I can say full name, last name, and everything is all one glossary. So when I select the name, it will all bring all the glossaries, glossary that with respect to that. Okay. So I, I can browse as such. Okay. Fine. Next is uh, the data catalog, right? So data catalog is nothing but uh, the metadata management, the data lineage, data classification, and catalog. So data as a data scientist, I should have, I should be able to add the uh, get all the I should be able to get all the data glossaries, right? So uh, uh, I should be able to get the I should be able to discover the data. I should be able to get the metadata. I should get to the lineage and collaboration. So all we saw. OK, so let's move into that as we saw in data map. And we also we can set policies. OK, we'll come back to the policies later. OK, first thing is 
you remember uh, we spoke about uh, let me go to data catalog then let's take the customer okay so this will solve all the problems okay so basically this says um, you know, we'll take the other one that will have more uh, proper details this is query queries by state which is there in the uh, par parquet file which is lies in the blob storage okay so this is the properties it's a qualified name the schema it talks about all the schema that is available okay and then the lineage this is what we want to talk about for example i told you right so i want to know how the data traveled from one place to another okay right now the data is here but i also have a database parquet file that is created from copying it from the data factory so how did i get that i i got it from a, my data factory which is did this job so whenever i want to make a change or how this data came in i can go back to the my data factory here okay and then there is this one is there this should this can be this is a connection it's okay Yeah. So this is a data factory which actually created the pipeline for the cop uh, for copying the uh, creating the parquet file. Okay. Now I know how my parquet file is created using the data factory, and it says, you know what? I first queries queries by state. There was one uh, queries by state uh, blob storage was there, and then country was there, and then this does this, and you can even open this in Azure Data Factory. So I know exactly how my data came through. So there is a there is a copy task here which does that stuff. Okay, fine. All right. Then, uh, yeah. So let's go to access control. This is for. So I have to. So this is where I can actually add people to access control. Okay, meaning I can say who are the data curators, who are the uh, data readers. I can just say who is the policy. Who can actually. So I can act, have, give access, and then for that data resource, I can give access to. For example. So allow data access to the. Then we can add. Switch it on. So not authorized. I can I have to go and add it here. Okay, I can add uh, add it here. Add it. Yes. Okay, so I need you can set here. So these are the lots of options available. I can still monitor what are the uh, access available. So the uh, scan ran on this day. I, I mean, I just made sure I scan ran the scan twenty day, two days before, one day before because it takes lots of time. And then uh, I think yeah, this one is talks about all my asset types available, how the product uh, groups go, and, and then actually drag drag and drop and draw it here so that I can have a new, uh, proper relationships. And then I think I covered most of the stuffs. Glossary we saw. Send so classification we saw. Sensitive labels we saw. And yeah, full management we saw. And then what other things I must I think manage the attributes. Okay, so manage the attributes is nothing but you actually can select. Uh, these are the uh, column names I can select for from a different group. Okay, so I can select uh, multiple uh, column names and sell. This is one of the attributes that 
share the system. I think, yeah, I think yes, uh, data policy. OK, let's come back to data policy. Last is a data policy, right? I can actually select lots of policies here and then I can create a policy for that uh, particular uh, op options. OK, all right. So these are the things that came in for you. Any questions you guys have? Any question? You can even send in chat. Okay. Okay, there are some questions in the chat. Uh, hi, can all data prompts generated using custom copilots? Okay, I think that's before one. 11.18, okay. Hi, uh, it's from Tayal Mageshwar. Uh, hi, once we add data versus the source, what all we can do it? Is it for uh, data alert generation? Okay, so it's not about only alerts. Okay, I can check what are the uh, data that are, that are available in the system and also uh, my PIA, I can search. I can I can uh, set some policies for the data. I can give access to those data. I can give access to those data in a column level and also in table level. And I also can uh, uh, provide uh, glossary so that we uh, discovery of uh, data I can do. So those are uh, things which you can do, uh, which is easily doable in. Uh, see, just think of something where you want to. Uh, uh, check all the PIA that is available in your system, okay, in your databases. It's going to take a lots and lots of time. And also, you can actually uh, connect Azure, AWS, and GCP directly. So they can, can scan all the databases, right? Once you connect, and then it can scan all databases, and then you can pull it, and then it can figure out what is the database does so because it has its own knowledge. And with the Copilot uh, integrate, I think mostly it will, they will integrate the Copilot into the data program. This will add more. Uh, value to the organization. So that's how the thing works. OK, any other questions you guys have? Can we include syntax here to extract other info other than PIL? OK, I am not aware of syntax. Well, let's try. We'll register. Syntax is uh, what? Syntax is a database, is it? Synapse or syntax? No, I think it's a. Uh, I mean, you have this Microsoft syntax now for SharePoint syntax, which came in Microsoft oh, okay. syntax, right? That is more I for extracting okay. data. So now that this is taking PII, and because syntax is also coming as part of governance data, okay, and okay. I don't I'm know what sure. it comes in I'm here. Not sure. okay. Maybe we can try. I'll just try. So it's more, I mean, it has its own. I think syntax by itself does all this, I guess, correct? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. okay. But is, I mean, I don't know whether it's coming as part of purview or not. Syntax is coming separately, is what I see. Ah, yes, it looks like it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions you guys have? Uh, Karthik, I think yes. there is another question. Okay. Uh, okay, it is replaced. Sorry. Okay. Fine. All right. Nice. Okay. So I'll just move on to the next one. All right. So this is my LinkedIn. If you want to uh, connect with me, you can connect with me. This is my QR code. Any other questions you guys have with respect to data? Any data, anything with respect to data, you can ask. If you have any problems in office and data governance or with respect to data, please feel free to ask me. So does this include Power Platform side as well, 